Hey everybody, welcome to um, Three Points of Light. I am one of your hostesses. My name is Mama D, aka Darlene. We have Jennifer's Journey. Say hey, Jennifer. Hello, everybody. How are you? And we have Brian Clover. Say hey, Brian. Hello, how are you? He's pouting in the corner. I told him to turn his camera off. He's sulking. Okay, he's pouting. He's pouting. And then we have the one and only, the true and the awesome and the amazing and the adorable. <gasps> Let me get the name right. Corrine Duinta. Hi, baby girl. How you doing? Oh, thank you, guys. Okay, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. So you all set for this craziness that we call Atlanta. three points of light? Yes, and I'm excited as well because it's All Hallows Eve, and when we finish talking about the purple plates, I would love to get into dead people. (laughs) That's my girl. (laughs) Well, I'm still alive. I might kill Brian. (laughs) Okay, I'm going to mute myself. I'm going to leave you. Love you. Bye. Thank you, Darlene. Okay, does Corrine, Jennifer? I am here. Uh, does Corrine have the controls? Okay. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, yes, I think I do, actually. Yeah, um, I see the little red okay, dot. so let me see. Okay, I'm trying to remember how to do this. Um, shoot. Last time I could do it. Now I don't know. Um, hmm. Shoot. How do I do this? Can someone give me a quick tutorial on this? How to do this? I see. Left. Darling. To the left. Right. Oh. I can't see it. So, Darlene, you're going to have to come on and. Hey, sweetie, hang on. I'm going to take back control for two seconds just to tell you exactly where the – and to the left, to the left, that was in response to Will. How's it hanging? <laughs> oh. Hang on. Do, 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 do. Okay. Okay. Down on the bottom left hand of the screen, most probably my left, should be your left, there's a little square, little paper with a plus sign. It says upload presentation. So go there. Now. Um, Do you see it down the bottom? Up, okay. Uh, when, you, when you're looking at the main screen um, down at the bottom, there's a little. Oh yes, I see. I got it, darling. Okay, yeah. so I just clicked it. I got it. Okay. I think I think I know what to do. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so I'm selecting my first file here, and let's see. Okay. And I'll just, um, what I'll do, Jennifer, is just keep uploading picture after picture. And so just that people know what we have available and get kind of a good idea of what we have. And I want to mention I've coincided 10% off the entire website for this show, and it begins right now. So everything at the website, 10% off right now. Um, that includes already, you know, items that are already on sale. So you can get a very good deal on a lot of different stuff. Um, and I'll be showing you a few of the items that we have. But anyways, as, you know, some of you know what purple plates are, and some of you perhaps do not. And um, it's it's very hard to explain everything that the plates do. Except, I will say this, they have worked tremendously for thousands of people over the years. I've been doing this for 17 years. The plates have been in existence since the 1970s, and uh, just an amazing device. And as Jennifer could attest to, lots of people can attest They put back into balance what's out of balance in your body. For instance, if I was, you know, if I had a burn, 
um, or I had um, a pain, a, a cramps, a headache, something like that, I would use a plate to counter that with, and it would bring that space, that part of my body back into vibration. Now, a lot of people use them also for depression, for anxiety, and um, <clears throat> what else? Different, um, and knuckle claims, obviously, because of the but, but I will say that I have had tremendous testimonials from people claiming that, you know, stating and, and wanting, wanting other people to know how it has helped their illnesses. So, for instance, I know Jennifer has a sciatic nerve problem. Jennifer, why don't you talk yeah. about what you use the plates for? Yeah, Besides clearing <laughs> crystals and whatnot. Yeah, I have been using the plates since right. I became aware of them and uh, became friends with Corrine. I have, oh, I have many issues with my back. I've got a sciatic nerve um, that is forever going to be an issue. I've got a shoulder that was out of its socket in 94 that never, you know, got a surgery. And so I, um, I, you, you know, use it on that. Um, I use, uh, you know, I'm a psychic medium. I use the purple plates for, I use the purple plates for everything. Um, the disc I would put on my head, which I'm going to get the headband. Um, and I'm very honored that those are back. Um, but I use them for everything. Uh, I use, mm-hmm. I use it in the refrigerator to keep milk, you know, longer. Um, which, you know, I, I would not say anything that I haven't, you know, tried and used and can testify to myself. But, uh, the sciatic nerve, uh, and, you know, dream time were the first, uh, the first ones I used. It on. And I was amazed. Um, I took the small plate. And, uh, I'm sort of small frame. So, and, uh, I would put it on the left side of my cheek and I was amazed. I was really amazed. Um, I could feel the warmth. I could, I could feel the pain easing up. And if anybody has ever suffered with sciatica, they know that that is one of the most excruciating pains that you could deal with. And I have been dealing it with, with it for years. But it wasn't until I started using the purple plate that I felt the relief. And, uh, I, I've, I've, you know, I just, I cannot say enough good that the purple plates have done for me. Um, I, uh, energy work. Um, I was at one time sleeping with my purple plates. Um, and I actually had to quit sleeping with the plate under my pillow because I, I, you know, I had premonition dreams, um, and the astral travel was out of the world. <laughs> it was, it was crazy. Mm-hmm. So now I, you know, will put them and a under lot of, the mattress. Right. And a lot of people, put, yeah, a lot of people put the large plate under their mattress. And, um, believe me, I have heard so many stories about you know, I mean, besides the fact that Reiki people, massage therapists, many psychic mediums use the plates to enhance their abilities, um, the dreams that people, playing, you know, like you said, traveling and whatnot. Um, I mean, it's just amazing what these people, are, you know, are claiming that the plates are doing for them. And, you know, this is not... Um, so expensive. I heard a talking the other day about um, uh, a machine that costs thirteen hundred dollars, and the you could get trip. all these great, yeah, sound travel, whatever. Okay, so you guys, anyone, almost anyone listening or anywhere in this world can afford a purple plate. They're very affordable and they're very effective. And guess what? You get one and you never have to replace it, recharge it. It lasts indefinitely as far as we can see. There's people that have been using them for over 45 years. So, I mean, this is, I'm, I'm going to get a large plate now just, just to show you something. Um, okay. So, 
This is a large purple plate, which is about 12 inches by 12 inches. It doesn't even, oh, it looks different on, on the, anyway, so this is a large plate. What's up? I said it, it looks good. And look at the size of the, and I was going to say, you don't have to sleep with them. Um, you, I, it just, them in the room. Um, I carry one. I carry my angel mm-hmm. in my purse. I've got the disc. I've got the cuff. I mean, you do not have to put that physically on your body to feel the energy. Um, but food. Um, my food has lasted so much longer. I mean, bananas. I have to keep bananas in the house. And I was amazed. Uh, I, I no longer throw my fruits and vegetables out. The purple plate has saved them. Right. Mm-hmm. In fact, a lady um, yesterday wrote to me and she said, you know, I put a large plate in my refrigerator and everything started to freeze and I had to turn the electricity or the, the temperature down on it. And this is what happens. This is what saves you money with electricity. And you can keep your food fresher longer. And guess what? It also, because we can't all afford all organic food, right? No. So, uh, at least I can't. So, I have a customer that put his groceries on a large plate at, from the store. He had a radionic device that measured um, radiation. And he saw the food was irradiated, as most food is that we get from the grocery store. And um, he put it on the plate for a half hour and measured the radiation again, and there was no trace. It restores the food and water and whatever liquids back to its original natural state with all the vitamins and the freshness that, you know, are, are, are were originally in this fruit or meat or dairy product or drink or water. So, um Anyway, so just can't say that to talk people into buying. I really don't. Because I say if you want to try the plate and you're, you try it, you get it, and you're not satisfied, I will certainly give you your money back. No questions asked as long as it is returned in the same condition as you received it. And so there's really no gamble for you. There's no risk. Um so, anyways, hey, Marie. Um, so, you know, and Marie, actually, Marie uh, broke her, what was it, Marie? Was it, I can't remember. Was it anyway. <laughs> so, Marie's got a, I can't remember. Marie, what did you break and you're using the plate? You know, I get I get confused because I've heard all these different uh, testimonials. But uh, dog here, um, the one to the left. Um, extreme left. That's Gigi. Gigi was diagnosed. Oh, lower back pain. Okay. Um, Gigi was diagnosed with a brain tumor two years ago. Uh, I suggested to the owner, who is Alicia, uh, to start using a plate for Gigi. And she did. And Gigi's running around fine and is, you know, seemingly okay. Now, I don't know if the tumor shrunk or what the story is with that, but it's certainly so many pet owners love these plates. So um, I'm going to give away something before the show's over, so you guys stay tuned. And um, do I have any questions, any other questions that you want to ask about these? I don't have a question, but I have a testimonial, you might say. Okay. 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 Um, I've got the cuff and and the little tiny square plate. Um, I gave, I wear the cuff every day. Every time you see me in my videos, you'll see it's still on me. But I gave the plate to my husband. Now, my husband's in kidney Mm -hmm. dialysis. He takes it every day takes it everywhere with him but he has it with him especially when he goes to dialysis now most people when they go to dialysis they have well at least where he is they have somebody driving them there and back and they just sort of like veg 
on the on the chair when they go through the dialysis. So it's a four hour process, uh, three times a week. Uh, my husband, right. since we got the since we got the 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 purple plate, he has he drives himself. When he comes home, he's not tired. He still has the energy. He's not as fatigued as he was before. You know, whether it's something else, I personally believe, and he personally believes that it, it's the purple plate because before we had it, he was starting to get like everybody else, where he would get the energy would drain from him because it's a process. But with this, mm-hmm. he seems to be, you know, he comes home, he's in a good mood. God help us all, he's in a good mood, you know, and he's, <laughs> you know he's he's walking fine. He's, but I still see people go telling me, I don't understand how your husband does it. He goes. All the time, and I, my, my mother or my father or whoever it is that's in, in the, the dialysis with them, they can't do this by themselves. They can't drive themselves to and from. They always have some, you know, give them a lift, and they're, you know, most of them have to take a wheelchair out of the building. They can walk in, but when they come to leave, they have to take a wheelchair out of. And it doesn't. Uh, my husband, since he's had it, has had no problems. So I, big praise on my purple plates. And that's all I have to say. Other than I love Corinne. Wow, thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> and they really, you know, I mean, you know, I tell the story too. I have multiple sclerosis, okay? And when I was diagnosed in 2004, my doctor said, get ready because you're probably going to need a wheelchair. I had tons of, um, um, you know, sclerosis means scarring. So there was a lot of scarring on my, in my head, on my brain, and he said, you know, you you know, get ready, because you're probably going to be in a wheelchair pretty soon, but thank God, and goddess, that, um, I started, you know, I started using the plates, I started doing a holistic, uh, program from my wonderful, amazing doctor, my holistic, and, um, I'm still okay. So, I mean, I just, really, this can help so many people, and and I know Jennifer is going to get mad, but I <laughs> I want everyone to have a plate. So, <laughs> so if an, a woman that comes to me says, you know, a woman and she's on a fixed income and she can't afford it, but she really wants one, I'm going to send it. And I have a program with, uh, the you know, the Fukushima um, you know, the, uh, nuclear, um, unfortunately, the nuclear fallout from Fukushima, a lot of people in the area are suffering. And so I have a program there going on where I'm distributing plates to people that need them because there's a lot of people that want them and, and need them. Um, so I work with a girl there to do that. But I mean, I, I, you know, so the thing is, uh, no one has to not, have a plate, and if you can't, you know, if you can't afford it, I will help you out. We'll work something out, you know. So I hope that you guys take advantage of the sale going on now, and um, you know, it's it's really a great sale. Like I said, Temple already on sale is huge. So yeah, you know, and yeah, yeah. I'll be yeah. uploading pictures here. So that's yeah. the, the this is the angel. I just want to remind everyone. I only have 20 of these angels left, and I don't know if I'm actually going to get more in or not. It's likely that I won't get more in. And um, so if you guys want an angel, I suggest you probably order it pretty soon because, like I said, I only have 20 left. So, um, And a headband, which you're going to see the picture of next, is on sale already. And the additional 10% off is more. So really, I just really wish that you could have at the website. We also have crystals. We have um, uh, oils and oils, um, oils, beeswax candles, lots of other stuff. So books, um, what else? The oh, just all kinds I mean, of stuff. The yeah, oils and corals, perfumes. Yeah, um, there is a go over and check out www.purpleplates.com. Um, there's rune sets. Uh, yeah. Corrine has 
a wide variety of everything. And uh, that, yes, I do get on Corrine because Corrine is very, very giving. Um, Corrine gives a lot. And I am just hoping that everybody, um, you know, takes advantage of the sale and uh, gets over there and, you know, and let's give back. Um, you know, I am a big one on promoting and, you know, the small businesses and, you know, people we know. Um, you know, I'm not into these big shops and, you know, but th- this is something that I believe so much in. Um, I know these things work because I have been using them for years and mm-hmm. I am still amazed, um, at, you know, what it does for me and what it can do for you. Um, I never do a reading without, you know, something, it's t- touching my purple plate. Um, just the energy. I wouldn't have gotten as far as I have um, without my purple plate. I do know that. Like I said, you don't have to physically mm-hmm. have it on your body. Well, you know, energy emits. Right. And this large plate has about five feet in either direction, which means that um, there's five feet from here, from here. And from here and below and back and forth. So this is why people use a large plate under their mattress. It's phenomenal for that. Um, also, you know, um, you guys probably know who Renee Richards is, the psychic medium. She absolutely loves the plates. And she does help me sell them. Um, and she knows that it does enhance the ability of psychic mediums of light workers of all sort, uh, Reiki, um, you know, just healing, uh, any kind of healing. Um, so, I mean, like I said, you got nothing to lose, so try it out. Okay, so Will is asking, how, how does it work, though? What's the science or not science behind it? Are they blessed by an Eskimo, Eskimo <laughs> medicine man? Or what? How did you know, Will? How did you know it is an Eskimo medicine man? Wow. He must be psychic. Yeah. No, it's not an Eskimo. <laughs> Eskimo. I, I was about to say Escobar because I've been watching Narcos on Netflix. <laughs> it's a Pablo Escobar's uh, medicine man. No, um. Okay, so it is all frequency involved. Okay. And I, I am not assigned to explain exactly. Pablo, Pablo, Pablo. I just watched the end of the second season. Oh, my God. You guys, it was so good. <laughs> so now I'm doing a poetry um, thing for the Day of the Dead. And so now I'm trying to um, learn how to say day. Um, De los, oh no, de, de los días del, uh, del muerte, which is the dead, dead. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. So anyway, <laughs> I'm all about Pablo Escobar's, uh, Colombian thing right now. It's just funny. Dia de los muertos. Thank you, Marie. Marie, thank you. Marie would know. Dia de los muertos. Okay. I'm sure Marie can say it a lot better than I can. <laughs> Oh, God. Anyway, <laughs> so, yeah, um, any other questions, you guys, about how the plates work or um, any, you know, anything else you would like to know? Because I know a lot of people here probably have heard me talk about these plates before, um, you know, for a long time, but um, just saying everything. But, you know, uh, and I am going to give away something um, in a little while, but I just want to know if anyone else has any questions. Darlene's asking, is there any downside to the plates? No. No. There's no, there don't, the only downside is if you don't have one. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So alcohol... This, this, this is what they say about when you put your alcohol on a purple plate, that it turns cheap wine into much better wine. Okay. Now, 
Have I done that? I haven't really done that before. I haven't really put a bottle of cheap wine on there to see what would happen because I think I just drank a bottle of wine too quickly. <laughs> I don't remember. Anyways, but will will it get you drunk quicker? So we'll get you. Uh, um, actually, you're right, Becca. It does it, it does something that you don't want to happen to your alcohol. Uh, oh my God, I used a disc on my forehead. In fact, let me just. Hold on, let me go get one. I'll show you what I do. Um, but when I have a headache or, you know, I've drank too much the night before, this is what I do. And so many people do this too. Okay, so I just put this right here. And it's going to stick because I have a oil on. And just keep it there, which is why a headband, if you're going to put it on this way, is perfect for the third eye. Okay, so, yeah, so it sticks pretty, you know, um, but, yeah, I mean, they're just, uh, yeah, you put your water on it, a gallon of water overnight on it, and um, that's what they term lit water, so that means it's restored to its original goodness, and when you drink it, you're actually getting the vibrations that are in the plates. Um, so, I mean, there's no harm to the plates. They, there's nothing harmful about them. Um, they can't cause any problems or interactions with anything else. And, um, they're just, they're just perfect, you know? Well, Will, it, it, hang, uh, you know, hangovers, I mean, um, well, I'll say when I had a hangover a while ago, <laughs> it did help me when I put it here. You know, it did. It really did. I was like, oh, God, I went to the cave and it was the next morning back from Boston. Oh, man. So I just, <laughs> well, improved bedroom. Hmm. <laughs> I'm sure it will. You better well, try it. Uh, yeah, you better try it, Brian. <laughs> no. And these Mostly headbands, I suggest anyway. highly that you – these headbands um, mean an awful lot to me. Um, and I am so happy that they are out. But this is this is my next uh, venture <laughs> is the headband. Um, you, you don't – you know, you can sleep. I mean, you, I, can, I can sleep with that. I can put it across my forehead, across my third eye put it on the head but they they do just like Corrine said you put that I've had many of headache um when my third eye was really opening up I mean I was having some excruciating pain um <laughs> and I would lay there with this disc on my forehead and it did stick thank goodness but I could not believe the results um that it gave me and uh the headaches, you know, I, they disappeared. I mean, and that was some pretty wild pain. But I, uh, I'm a firm believer in them, and mm -hmm. like I said, I would not attest to them if I didn't know that they work. And I would not be part of selling them for so many years as I have been if I didn't completely believe in their ability. And I mean. That's why, I, like I said, I don't try people into buying them. I try. I ask. All I ask, try it out. And if you don't get money, you know. So, but they're just. I mean, they're they're just perfect. Now, this is an angel. Uh, this is actually handmade by my friend Karen, who makes a link for the website. So this is this is pretty cool. This is under the. Only one. I think it's on, under the jewelry piece. There's a big section of of handmade only one pieces jewelry. Um, they all, you know, crystals and whatnot, and different stones. Um, so there's some pretty cool stuff there, and you know, when you get it, no one else is going to have it. So that's pretty cool too. So. Um, Trying to think of what else to tell people about. Um, well, the testimonials, you know, um, they're just amazing. I mean, I get testimonials every 
week. I don't put them all on the website, but there's a lot there right now. And, um, of course, I, I don't, you know, I mean, I mentioned on the last show I was on, on Tuesday, um, that some people think that, or this is what, it was in Linda Goodman's book, Star Signs, this, where I learned about the dates originally. And that came out in the 90s. And um, she has a whole chapter on the purple plates. And um, she says that her her husband on the purple plate face down and actually stopped, it stopped her husband from being a really rich alcoholic as he was. Um, it's supposed to influence people to be the best person that they can be. Now, this apparently involved the woman getting her husband to stop drinking. So that's what happened with that, which is pretty cool. But other people have called me and they've done, you know, but to me that borders on voodoo. You know, I, I don't I do not do that kind of stuff. But um, <laughs> at least as far as you know, I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry, I gotta stop making jokes. <laughs> no, no, I'm making the joke. But um, <laughs> so anyways, um, yeah, some ladies call me up and they tell me they're trying to get their exes back or whatnot, or attract someone and and they'll use that. But um, yeah. So like I said, I I can't speak to that. I never really try to do that. But I think that's interesting. Yeah, and they actually, the place emit a negative ions, which is negative ions are in the atmosphere for a storm. Um, you can actually smell the ionic atmosphere before a storm. You guys know what it smells like. Now, the plates are loaded with negative ions, <clears throat> which are, are better than, well, yeah, they're better than positive ions. Um, but they're positive energy. The negative ions are actually the positive energy. So they're backwards sounding. But um, I'm trying to think of what else I'm telling you about them. God, there's so many uses. There sure is. There's That's so why I just tell people, get, get one. Go ahead. I don't know who was saying anything. Uh, okay, I said there's so many uses. That's why I always tell you just get it and experiment with it yourself. Um, cause that's that's what I did. I didn't know what it would be good for, even though I had read some testimonials and reviews. Uh, but I still just you know did what I tried it out with everything, you know. And I actually <clears throat> did start putting my food and water on it, and uh, not my alcohol. And, uh, <laughs> and my supplements and, um, and things like this. So, and I also sleep, uh, well, uh there's a large plate under my mattress. And, um, yeah, I have some pretty freaking far out dreams myself. Mm. But anyways, okay, so, um, what else should, so are, are we, do, are we gonna like finish talking about the plates because I would like to bring Brian and, uh, Darlene back on to talk about other things since it is the night before Halloween here. And, um, yeah, I would just like to say it's that an uh, just recently I, you know, got, I'm, I've been seeing a new doctor and just recently I've been getting very open and honest with my doctor. And, um, after some discussions, um, my doctor knows I will not take pain medication. I, I will. I refuse to take pain medication, and she was rather miffed, <laughs> you know, that uh, the amount of pain I was having and uh, the things I was suffering with, that I refused pain medication. But I know what that can do to you, and it wasn't doing me any damn good. But uh, and I have, sh you know, I have talked to her. Um, she's very impressed with the way that I am handling this and I did, you know, pull my purple plate out of the back of my pants and I showed it to her and she is very impressed that this is working the way it is. Um I don't go in there complaining about pain. Um I've got, you know, I've got a very positive attitude about it and I I can swear these 
plates. I don't know where I would be without them, believe me. Um, I suffered quite bad with this pain. Um, it was terrible. Some days I couldn't even get out of the bed, couldn't walk, couldn't sit, couldn't stand. It was terrible. But these plates have helped me tremendously. Right. And we all know how bad the pharmaceutical industry is because, really, uh, the opiates in the country is epidemic. It's disgusting. It kills 20,000 people a year, only in the United States alone. Uh, who knows how many around the world that it kills. Um, so not on my high horse about opiates and, and particles, but it is, it's killed many of the ones, unfortunately. So we need, we need to really, you know, rail against that. And you have done that, Jen, and I appreciate that, you know. Getting a little emotional here. <laughs> <laughs> and I well, love the way these you know, people plates. that have died on drugs. Oh yes, many. Yeah, and I, we just lost more. Um, it is. It's. It's really bad. And if you can substitute that with a purple plate, um, a disc, and like the jewelry. Um, you see that there is, there's the purple disc behind this. Um, there's so many ways to wear these. There's so many different ways to use them. And Diane was asking about the tap water. Here I have very hard water. Um, I didn't even, you know, I was buying water, bottled water for my plants. Um, and my plants, you know, those are my babies. But I would stick, you know, a, the jug, I would get a gallon jug of water. And I would sit it on the plate. And no more of that crusty, icky calcium buildup on my beautiful plants. And my plants have flourished. Um, it, it's just amazing. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. Yeah, I, I have a lot of people. I, right. I, I have a lot of people that actually, um, you know, do water their plants with the energized water and also um they uh put bags of sand on the plate of sand and they sprinkle it in their gardens for the effect of having that energy around all you know your your growing everything that's growing in your garden and whatnot so i think that's so cool i mean i have a lot of people that swear by that I mean, it's just good. Like, you know, the, the water um, that we're drinking, energized by the plate, is like, man, you can't get better than that. You know what I mean? It turn, it does. I defy anyone to get a plate, put a glass of tap water on there, taste it before you put it on there, and then taste it after it's been on there for 20 minutes. It is so much better. And we all, I have lousy water, too. I don't even know what's in my uh, local water exactly, except that I know I don't want to drink it until I've energized it. And I do with everything I drink, so. Um, okay, does the plate have to be under glass containers to work its magic, or can it be anything plastic? Uh, no, it can be plastic, Diane, indeed. Um, yeah. Like up a jug of water jug of water and it, it will go through that, yes and um the glass it's not necessary for it to be in glass no so yeah you're welcome i mean it's just really um yeah you're welcome um yeah i'm trying to think of what else anything else you can think of jennifer Oh, now these I are the go gold on and on and on about the purple plates. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I just don't want to bore people. It's like you know, you know, honestly, it's like you have to try them to see their magic, to experience their magic. Um, okay, so these what I'm showing right now are gold, 24 karat gold flecked purple energy bracelets. They're very popular on the website. So. 
now, okay, so these actually aren't available anymore, the ones with the fishes. Those are sold out. But these are still available, and they're only $19.99. And with the 10% off sale, they're even less. So these are very beautiful, very popular. And we also have these bracelets without the gold on them. Um, you can buy those there as well. There's a t there's just so many. So why purple? Uh, the man who invented the plates, uh, Ralph Berg's dresser, was so into St. Germain. St. Germain's main color, of course, as many of you know, is purple. Um, purple is also the color of the highest vibration of, um, you know, in, in the chakra system and other systems of the um, of the body. Um, so it's a, it's you know, it's I think simply he chose purple because of Saint Germain. Um, free delivery to the UK? I think not. Eric Lynn, I think not. No. <laughs> I'll, I'll hook you up, Eric, though. If you order, I'll give you something that offsets the delivery fee. <laughs> Bugger. <Aww. laughs> and I always do that. If somebody orders and the postage seems to be, you know, too much money. It's, it's really not, though. And I can even get you less money for postage if you tell me what you want. And um, and I can give you the lowest postage price there is because sometimes it's hard to gauge when people are ordering overseas exactly how much it's going to be. So we tend to go on the little bit higher side instead of the lower side, but it's not always exactly what is stated. Um, hand delivery to Kentucky. Well, you can come here, Will, and I'll hand deliver it to you at my door. <laughs> can I ask you something, Will? Will, do you have a goatee, Will? <laughs> well, she's asking you if you have a goatee. No. No. Oh. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you did. I don't know why. I don't know. I, I saw red hair. He's clean shaven. Okay. All right. Um, anyways, so, yeah, no hand delivery to Kentucky. Although I wouldn't mind going back to Kentucky, but <laughs> not to deliver one thing. <laughs> so, your hair is black. I love black hair. I love black hair. Anyways, this isn't the game I know. So, uh, <laughs> I remember one time, like, so, somebody called, oh, I have to show you guys supernatural radio. And one time this guy called in, and he was so nice, and we were getting along so well. And I was like, so, um, you know, where are you going on vacation, and blah, 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 blah. And it was so funny. It turned into the dating game, right? It was just hilarious to me. Anyways, I cackle a lot, as you can probably tell. So... <laughs> I would like to go to Canada again, too, actually. Yes, I would. i got to get my visa renewed. Um, anyway, so you want to take a little break, and then we'll come back, and let's talk about um, the dead. Okay, yeah, we're all, everybody can go get a drink of water, uh, run to the, the bathroom, do you know, anything, and... Uh, and we'll be right back. Where's Darlene? Potty break. There you go, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll be back. Hello, everybody. How's everybody okay. doing? 
Ah, uh, yeah. If we were, Cause can't have can't have dead air time because then I go crazy. Okay, so like, hello. Well, we're taking a break. We're taking a party break, but in the meantime, I can talk. <laughs> hey, everybody. That's unusual. See, I've been sitting ever so. I've been sitting <laughs> ever so quietly. So have I. I was just listening. Hey, Leo. That was oh. just behave. I'll, I'll block you again. I'll lock you. I'll lock you butt out. I, I have Pauline's permission. I have Pauline's permission. <laughs> so yes, um, 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 I hope everybody is. Um, hi, Becky J. <laughs> uh, no, that's enough. I'm so glad that everybody's here. Okay, that strange person in Kissimmee, Florida, best leave real quick. <laughs> Okay, okay, I've got everybody locked. If anybody wants to come on mic and, and have something to say or have a question and want to come on mic, there's a little doo-doo on the other side, on the side, bottom left-hand corner. It's a little hand. Click on it, and then up will pop a uh, happy face and it says all kinds of things. It says raise your hand, says. And if you notice next to my name, but wait a minute, it should be there. Do, 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 do. There, see next to me. It's a lot of hand. I said, do you want to talk? <laughs> Mine should be up there all the time because I'm always talking. <laughs> I'm waiting. I want people with the hands up because then I have to unlock you. We're not going to unlock me, Florida, because that Florida, Floridian person is strange. <laughs> Just in case anybody knows, doesn't know, that's me. I have just, you know, if the computer dies, which we've seen, we've all seen that happen before. Mama D's computer, Darlene's computer, and I go, ah, I'm running from room to room, computer to computer. So now I have a, my cell phone. <laughs> I'm everywhere. I can find everybody and catch everybody. Lost you guys for some reason. No, sweetie, everybody's gone on a party. Why am I hearing myself? I don't know. Through uh, Karine's equipment. Because, uh, I am. Okay. Teddy. Yeah, well, Teddy, that's the hate. Oh, no, I'll mute it. That's okay. We love you anyway. Okay. Team mute us. Teddy, best behave himself. Please. It's working now. I'm so glad. So I'm glad to have you back again, Will. It's nice to have recurring members. And Becca G, you know I'm glad to have you back. And you know my love is being sent to you. Um, as much healing as you can take, I'm giving you. And I know you can take it. No, I'm, I'm much the same as Will. You know, I, I, look, at, uh, I look at the, the sort of um, supernatural properties of the purple plates because... You know, it's only a piece of aluminium, and you think to yourself, well, how the hell has anything been altered on that structurally? And uh, We have uh, posted, Corrine and I have posted, um, you can go on Corrine to Winter, you can go to Purple Plates. There are, you know, we uh, she has been doing shows, and she has explained, um, you know, what goes in, because it is a process. It's not just a piece of a purple aluminum plate. Um, there is a process um, with these. And um, like I said, you know, if, if you order and you're not satisfied, Corrine asks no questions. And she, if you return the merchandise, she will refund your money. Um, okay. But I tell you, you, yes, if you, once you start using these, you will be completely satisfied, I'm sure. Yeah, I will have to try one, but um, I say just at the moment uh, we've got massive bills coming, so I'm a bit, a bit tired, but um, I will get one eventually. Right, and there's, I mean, they're not that expensive. I mean, I, I we, uh, Corrine was on a show, not naming any names. Not mine. And <laughs> this woman was selling. Basically sound. 
and um 1300 bucks a pop um with these what? plates i mean yeah look at look and, and the plates um yeah um i nearly fell over too um let's face it we we can't afford that and you shouldn't have to spend that kind of money on something that you know can help you and this will help you um uh you know the jewelry i mean you you've got you know you got it in there and like i said you do not have to physically wear the plate you it's in the room i mean um i'm using a plate for manifesting purposes uh i uh i just they, they there's so much that they can do i can't say enough about the purple plates yeah they are amazing but it's like they, they it sounds like something out of a science fiction plot but if you understood the way they are created you would completely get it and understand why they have the qualities and the properties that they do um so you know Anyways, I just so there's Darlene with our purple bracelet that she wears every oh, single all, time. Thank you, Darlene. <laughs> there's that book I like. Okay, just a quick thing, here, Queen. Um, after the show, you're gonna go back to the, you're gonna go back to your section of the site and see if my order went through because I ordered three angels. Okay, but I just don't know if it went through or not. So I don't want to order it twice. If it didn't, let me know and we'll. I'll okay, leave I, I, I don't because I'll. Okay, I don't see it yet. Okay, but because I want my angels. Before I can't they go really. Away. I don't want to check right now because I don't want to stop. Yeah, yeah. I said after the show. Yeah, no kidding. I know. That's why I haven't. I have a site about. I just wanted to tell you because um, maybe I should put it on the site. I don't know. Um, so, well, how do you? So, Will, how do you make? Um. Like uh, Jennifer just said, there's a whole description on how to make it, and it is on, what, what is the Facebook um, link for purple plates? Yeah. Or you can go to the website and look, right. look at about, because I'm not, not a scientist, and I'm just you know, speaking technical Don doesn't um it's not really. So better if you just read the descriptions I could never tell you exactly what goes on in making them. So anyways, I just wanna also remind <laughs> I'm such an idiot. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. So, <laughs> this is my book, okay? So um, this is my newest book, actually. I have mail. But this is The Sensitive Souls Waking Up. You could probably read this in two hours. And, and um, I just want, if, with your permission, you guys, I would read a, um, a section, a little graph from the book. So you kind of know what it's about. Um, and it is available on Amazon under Kareen de Winter, along with a bunch of other books that I have. But it is, um, it's basically about how you can be okay in life even in the midst of hell. Um, So, I mean, you know, you can go through many hellish things in your life and be okay, even when you're going through it. And believe me, I've, I've, gone, I've been through it and still going through it in, in many ways, but I'm not done laughing, so uh -uh. that's good. Um, so can I, um, can I read uh, to you something from this, um, Darlene? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, so this, actually, this chapter is called You Have Done What You Could, and it starts out with a quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Finish each day and be done with it. You have done what you could. Some blunders and absurdities no doubt crept in. 
Forget them as soon as you can. Tomorrow is a new day. You shall begin it serenely and with too high spirit to be encumbered with your old nonsense. Now, I love Emerson as a great equalizer. It's like when I need to you know, ground myself, uh, I'll read some Emerson. I love him, too. Um, so that's, in fact, what I say. Emerson is a great equalizer. His words are able to ground you as you need to be Clarice. grounded. Bring it back to the nature of the Yes. Is it possible for you to call in because your voice is getting choppier and I want people to be able to hear it? Okay. Um, if you just tell me which number to call in, I can do that. Hold on, I switch up. <laughs> Hold on. It's like, I'm not. Shite. Sorry. Tell the hang about my UK friends. Thank you, Leo. Leo, Thank put you. it into the chat room. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to put myself on your call. Already done. I just got to pay to where you are. Do, 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 do. We're back in a short while, darling. I've got some urgent stuff I've got to do. I'll be back soon. Okay. I'm watching, watching. Okay, Mike. We'll type in Jennifer's Journey. It's a couple Jennifer's Journey. I'll send you a friend request uh, after the show, Will. Okay. For some reason, I cannot find. If you see where, where Corrine comes in, you'll let me know because I can't seem to find her if she wants to call in. You'll be calling in from a Skype number. Okay. Well, it doesn't always say what it is. Thank you, Leo. Hmm. Whoop, she's she gone completely. In. Okay, where is, she? where is she? Where is she? Jennifer's journey, Brian Clover. There she is. I think. Is that you? Nope. <laughs> well, that's me kissing me. Okay, well, while we're waiting for um, Corrine to, to call in, um, if she isn't there, she should call back. Yeah, she will. Sweeties. This is not, thankfully, this is not the first time she's been on, well, first time she's been on the show, but there she is. She'll come in, she'll come in. She's actually still here physically, just not here. Her voice ain't here yet, but when she gets here, watch out, world. Okay. Okay, I found the purple plates. Oops, that was what I wanted. All righty, Facebook is acting like a butts. Here we go. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. We can hear Okay. You. you can hear me okay? Yes. Perfectly. Well. 
Okay, good. Thank you. Um, okay, so I read the quote by uh, Emerson, and mm -hmm. I go on to say, his poetry and words are able to ground you in the ways you need to be grounded, bringing you back to the nature that is us and tell you what time it really is. A friend once told me that he turns to Emerson when he needs a kick in the ass, bringing him back down to reality and acknowledging those things that are truly important. I have to say also that certain music does this also. Don't underestimate music and its effect on the human body. It has an enormous effect on us just as words do. Tones, vibrations, and chords are interwoven naturally in our body, which responds to each one in a different way. Bells, for instance, might make you feel peaceful. Essentially, we are music made up of different frequencies and energies, some with a sound, some without. Even light frequencies have a corresponding sound vibration. In reference to Emerson's quote above, and I think it's a great one, I have this to say. There are going to be lots of situations that befall us that are mind-boggling and hurt like hell. No one tells you this when you're young. I guess that's a good thing because we don't want to be afraid of growing older, of not having our safety net of parental protection. Our parents did the best they could no matter what your childhood was like. They never got a manual telling them how to act, what to do, to be a perfect parent and likely it was their first time being a parent and probably just as confusing to them as it was for us. It's funny that we need to pass a test to drive a car, but we don't have to pass a test to become a parent. Isn't being a parent the most serious thing one can undertake? Whatever your challenge is at any given time, you and only you have the power to let it go. And that's just one of the chapters in this book. But, I mean, this is my heart and soul, and I just, I love this book, and <laughs> I think you will, too. <laughs> Jennifer's read it a couple times, too. Yes, yes. I just uh, put it in the chat room. Yeah, this is a book that Corrine uh, wrote. This is uh, one of her last books. That it's available at Amazon. I highly recommend this book. Corrine has written many things. Uh Got to yes. check her out. Got to check her out. She's a poet. She's an artist. Uh, like I said, she is very multi-talented. Multi-talent doesn't <laughs> cover it. <laughs> right. It's like I said in, in the video that I did earlier. If you think you know Corrine, forget it because she'll just pull something new out of the hat. She just, she has such deep, she's like an onion. Every time you peel away a layer, something new comes up. And if you don't watch out, you can cry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so what are you guys doing for Halloween? Anything? I'm going to do radio. <laughs> on the other station. But no, I don't do anything for Halloween. What? Yeah, I'm sorry. Right. I'm far enough what? out that I don't have what? little munch to come to my <laughs> door. Last year for Halloween, I was on Chris Tom's show, and I had butterflies in my hair. Maybe this year, I won't be on a video show, but maybe this year I'll put some butterflies in my hair, too. Oh hush, Will. You like oh, to dance, right. floating I was just wearing a blonde wig left. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd like to go to a graveyard tomorrow. I don't know which one, but I'd like to do something kind of uh, witchy. Yeah, I'm going to a Halloween party. Um, my brother every year, his house his house is very well decorated, and people come from all over to see the house and uh, get their pictures taken. The kids are all going to have a good time. Uh, it's really going to be a good time. I'm pretty excited. I am about to put cool. some. Uh, 
I think y'all should follow link. I think it might. Uh... Night, night, Eric. So we were talking. Night, Eric. Thank you. Um, so we are talking last night, Darlene, me and Jennifer, yes. about a book that I'm reading. Uh, I started this book a long time ago. I never finished it, but it's called The Last Frontier by Julia Asante. And it's all about life after death and how to make contact. And um, in this in this chapter that I read last night, she talks about the way to make contact with the other side, the best way is to have a strong emotion. Um, it doesn't matter if you're really mad or you're really sad or uh, angry or, you know, but the thing is to be as honest as you can and with mm-hmm. your emotion and also to keep talking out loud to the people on the other side. Uh, say I want to contact my father, I would say, you know, very clearly out loud, Dad, I need you to, you know, can can you please show me you're here? Can you please, you know, give me a sign that you're here? And can you hear me? And just keep talking out loud to them. And so, and this is one thing I do not do when I'm doing readings. And I know Jennifer does do this that she feels a certain way. Like she'll feel, for instance, nauseous. And that's because the person she's picking up was nauseous. Or the person she's picking up had a head injury, so she gets a headache. So that's the, those are things that I don't necessarily pay attention to when I'm doing a reading. But now, after reading, this book is so good. I mean, it's just so thorough. It's huge. It's a huge book. Um but um, it's just so, you know, interesting. So, Jennifer, how, you know, do you also smell things? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, and it's, <laughs> yeah, and it's, and it's getting more frequent. Like it's, uh, and what you said, you, yeah, you know, I got a big mouth, and I don't care <laughs> who hears me. Um, yes, I talk out loud. Um, I do talk in my head, but, yes, I talk out loud. I can do that here be free to be me and I do talk out loud but yes I get the smells um that's getting a little bit stronger but yeah when you you know when you pay attention that's why I am you know I've been preaching for years journal write you know write this stuff down your dreams your synchronicities when you do that it's doing the work um when you I mean and putting thoughts into your head you know be careful what you you know, wish for. Um, that is a very true statement. Um, but yes, I talk to people all the time. You know, you might not see them and hear them, but I do. And everything I do just amplifies. It amplifies, you know, the connection. It makes the connection that much stronger. Um, they know how to get my attention. Yes, I get the smells. Um, yes, I do. I'm a big empath. Um, I pick up a lot, but yes, the head, you know, I've been doing, I've done readings where some not so nice stuff happened and I would feel it and I, you know, I just couldn't understand it. Um, and that's another thing where my purple plate, I, you know, I always do something with prayer. Um, I never go into a reading without prayer. Prepare myself. I ground balance and I do my prayers of protection. But that's another, I ask my purple plate to, you know, emit its energies. And, you know, when I, after I feel that, and I clear it, you know, for it to leave. I do not want to be walking around with somebody else's axe in my head, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> that would be a headache. Point. Yeah, I mean. What and was I, the name of the book again, Kareen? It's called The Last Frontier by Julia Asante. That's A-S-S-A-N-T-E. I had her on my show last year, and uh, I, I want to have her back again, actually, because she's just brilliant, very brilliant. Yeah, very, very good one. I swear you Amazon's know, going to love me. I want to tell everyone a story about what happened recently with Jennifer. Um, so, you know, you guys know I'm friendly with Jennifer. You know, we talk 
uh, usually every week. And uh, so we are talking, and I know that I never told her this information. And so we're talking one day, and she says, yeah, well, you, just like when you were telling me about the good times on Green Acre, I go, what, are you, what did you just say? Because, you know, with your father, the good times on Green Acre. And I said, I never, ever told you that I lived on Green Acre, ever in my life. But she, but she came out with this. She goes, yes, she, you did. No, I thought you did. I go, no, but so you must have dreamed that, Jennifer. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's just that was, how it happens. <laughs> but I was like, what? You know? Yeah, that's just how it happens. And sometimes I do. I think that somebody has told me something or, you know, and that's where, you know, sometimes doubt comes in. Um, I I dealt with a lot of doubt. But, uh, yeah, that's – uh, and that started out with the song Green Acres was playing in my head. And oh my I God. assumed – oh, yeah, I get that a lot. Um, I assumed that that was something that was meant for me because of somebody that I was connected with. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, you know how it gets. It gets crazy, but I love my crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I want everyone to know also that Jennifer has a website. It's Jennifer's Journey 444.com. And uh, she has incredible uh, rates right now because she just started the website. And so I really urge everyone to check out Jennifer's website and see all the different things that you can um, get from her, the different kind of readings, mediumship readings, psychic readings. Um, also, she does remote viewing. Um what she's gone into a, a person's house that I was having issue with and told me what was going on. Um, so, I mean, it's just really, um, you know, we, we all need someone like this, you know, on our side. So I'm oh, glad you're right. on my side. Thank you. Oh, and there's my energy. You're well. I love <laughs> my energy. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and that's something, else. you know, when – Sometimes, you know, I, and I've, you know, I get my fair share of readings. Um, um, and when you tune into somebody's energy, it bounces back. I ever, you know, every reading that I have gotten lately, if the things weren't just starting to happen immediately after that reading, it got crazy. The stuff would start immediately happening. Um, I just love it. I love everything about it. Um, I'm going to live crazy <laughs> ever after. Um, but it, it is just, it is amazing at some of the things you can do. Um, as you have to give up the doubt and the fear. Yes, that's true. And also, um, as we are talking about one day recently, that we also have to separate our egos, which you guys, it's, it's impossible to actually live without your ego, right? Exactly. We know this. But when you're giving a reading, you absolutely have to separate your own stuff from the stuff that is coming in. And, but that, but that, I think that's the biggest mistake, you know, and not that I'm a professional freaking reader. But, I mean, I think that's the biggest mistake readers make is that they put their own stuff into a reading when it has nothing to do with them. And they've got to, like, push that ego out of the way so they can, you know, their reading is honest and clear and precise. Um, and, you know, it, but that's probably the hardest thing to do is to, to, you know, to get rid of your own ego. Exactly. Yeah, it's well, very it's, hard. it's everybody, whether they're giving a mediumship reading or a, a oracle, tarot, or psychic, whatever kind of reading, we all have our doubts. You know, it's like sometimes I'll do a reading for somebody, and it's like, in my head, in, in Darlene's head, it's like, that doesn't make any sense, you know. But when you lay it out to the, to the client or to, to, to whomever you're reading for, and like, like you, like you said, holy shit, how did she know that? Green Acres. But 
you know, we're sitting there going, okay, doesn't make sense. Like Jennifer's like, why the heck am I singing Greekers? Like right now you got that song stuck in my head, right? But mm-hmm. yeah. it doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to make sense to us, to the reader. Exactly. But to the read, to the client, to the reedy, it's like, uh, like where did it come from? It, it just. Didn't. And once the synchronicities start flowing, mm-hmm. and you start paying attention and recognizing them, it seems like everything is synchronistic. Stick. Um, Corrine checked in to the chat room at five twenty-two. Um, yes, I paid attention to that. <laughs> I've. <laughs> Sounds crazy. It might sound crazy to you, but to me, it's not crazy. Um, very synchronistic, especially where Corrine's concerned. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, pay atten- pay attention. And once you start paying attention, and you know, I'm like I said, I'm a firm believer. Um, I myself don't write everything down anymore because I would have a car accident. Um, I'd bang into a wall. Um, um, I've already thrown out a million trees over here, but, you know, I, I still do. You know, I write things down. Um, you go back later. It will hit you later. Sometimes, you know, something will pop in, and I'm like, mm, that's funny, and then later it'll click. Oh, this is why. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, pay attention. Pay attention to everything. Yeah, right. but honestly, I, I work in a totally different way. Um I pick up direct from people, and if I was to write everything down, um, it'd be just a mess which I could never use anyway because it's it's a direct thing uh, that I do. So it makes a lot of difference. <laughs> That's it. Just make mental notes. Uh, if you pick up, if I pick up something from somebody that they're hurting in a particular way, um, I, I just remember that for a while, and then I'll go up and. Point it out nicely, uh, you know, what's happening. So, uh, it, it, I think everybody is different. Everybody's got to find their own uh, particular path up the mountain. And uh, once you do Very that, true. I think life becomes so much easier. Yeah. Thank well, you. now, Jennifer mentioned synchronicity. For those of you who don't know what synchronicity is, and probably most of you do, um, a synchronicity is the experience of two or more events as meaning, meaningfully related, where they are unlikely to be causally related. Okay, so this, obviously, uh, Carl Jung, a Swiss psychologist in the 1920s, coined the term synchronicity. And uh, there's been so much said about, um, you know, but the... the so I read a whole book on synchronicity, and it's like, so what is the reason these synchronous things happen to us? Is there a reason? Some people term it as uh, it's, it's a sign that the universe is paying attention. Does it mean anything when these synchronicities happen? And I'll tell you one synchronicity that happened to me. I was in Manhattan, and my friend John had moved there uh, about two years before I went there. I wanted to see him so bad. And um, so on the, you know, on the train there, uh, my friend that I went with, I said, you know, I really want to see John. And she said, you know, she smiled at me and she said, you know, New York's a big city, right? I didn't know where he was. I had no idea where he was. So um, this is actually in the book. That's why I'm reading. I'm kind of telling this story from the book. Um, okay, so once we were in the city, she contacted her friend and asked for directions to a good nightclub. And uh, the friend mentioned a couple of places, and we, we decided to go to one on McDougal Street in the village. So the club was set in a basement, as so many clubs in New York City are, and we descended the steps toward the loud music and crowd of strangers. I was on the first few steps down when someone who was going up the stairs touched my arm. It was John. We exchanged info and left. Okay, so then my friend asked me, who is that? And I said, it was John, and she dropped her jaw. She said, I can't believe you saw him. You know what I mean? In this whole big city that we would go to this one club and run into him. And it was, you know, so many amazing, but did that mean what? What did that mean? I had a huge crush on this guy. Did it mean anything? No. (laughs) It didn't mean anything. It just meant, what did it mean? Does it have meaning? That's what I'm asking, you know? 
I don't, I don't, I, I don't see. So, I mean, okay, what is the, there's, there's so many, I mean, just like, uh, well, I'm sh- sure I've shared this with Corrine and Jackie. Uh, there had been two men, um, involved, uh, you know, in my life exactly around the same time. This was over 25 years ago. And um, just out of the blue, I started thinking about these two. And, uh, you know, I wasn't very fond of them. Uh, you know, I'm thinking, thank God I don't have anything to do with them. But I was like, why in the hell am I thinking about them? Well, on Tuesday, I ran into number one. Uh, I pulled up in a parking lot. I had to sit there and wait for something to open. Lo and behold, who pulls up right next to me? I mean, right next to me. And it was like, you've got to be kidding me. This is really crazy. Um, No, to me, it really wasn't crazy. But, you know, of course, I've got to say that. And two days later, I get a phone call from the other guy. Um, he got my number somehow. Now, that is not coincidence. That is not coincidence. No one could ever convince me that it was. No, it's, uh, and some people say there is no such thing as coincidence. No, I, I used to, this has been going on since my, before my teenage years. And that is, I mean, you would always hear, you know, that's crazy. Oh, it was a coincidence. Isn't that a coincidence? Now, there is no, nothing by coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence. Nothing right. by coincidence. Mm-hmm. Right. I know. It's so strange, you know? Yeah, there's a reason for everything. Yeah. Well, um, okay, so also I want to tell you guys this story. <clears throat> is this world hell? Is is this world hell? And some people think this is hell. Some people think this is heaven. Um, some people believe there is no hell, that this earth is actually hell itself. I've heard this from others often. When I met the inventor of the Mel meter, Gary Galka, some of you guys might know who he is. Um, I had a chance to speak with him, with his departed daughter, Melissa, who the Mel Meter is named for. Now, there was a Ghost Adventures episode about Melissa. I don't know if you guys saw it with, with, with uh, Zach and whatever. Anyways, um, there, there's a pretty good episode with Gary Galka and his family on there uh, contacting Melissa. So I was talking to Melissa through Gary at his office. <clears throat> And I posed the question to Melissa, where is hell? And after a few moments, Gary relayed Melissa's response to me, this realm is hell. It's right here. Right here. So that's what she said from the other side. And, um, but that's why we have to be okay, even in hell. <laughs> we don't right. have to be, but what the hell are we going to do, right? <laughs> Actually, I had, before Corrine and I had even, I had seen that episode. It was pretty amazing. Um, that was something I would never forget. And when Corrine mentioned, you know, that when she was talking about it, that she knew this guy and she, I mean, that I, that floored me too. I was like, oh wow, that is just so cool. But yeah, that, that's pretty amazing. Um, and it's pretty amazing the connection that spirit does have with us and uh, how much that we can learn and um, how much they help us. Right. Well, but here's the, the other show? thing. It's a, what is it, Ghost Adventures? It was, I uh, believe it was, was it Ghost Adventures? It's with that Zach Bagan. Yeah, it was Ghost Ghost Adventures. Adventures, yes, Ghost Adventures. Um, But what's really interesting to me is that after I had visited Gary, and Gary is one of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life. He's just he's just wonderful. Um, he um, and this is also on YouTube, you guys, if you want to look this up. One day he's talking to Melissa, his daughter on the other side, and 
Melissa is having a fight with some entity saying to get away, like, go away, get away. You hear this on the EV, you know, the, if you want to call it EVP, you hear this just, if you just look up Gary Galka, Melissa, um, you know, um, God, a fight or I, I don't remember what, what the title of the uh, YouTube video is. But anyway, so she's saying get away from me because when supposedly when the other side, the people on the other side come to talk to us, they do have to come down. They have to bring down their vibration to be able to give us messages, which is one danger in this. Right, you guys. And um, so anyways, Melissa's saying, get out of here. So shortly after that happened, after I went to Gary's office a couple of times, he was blocked from uh, talking to Melissa. Some entity, not to freak you guys out, some entity on the other side was threatening Gary, giving Gary messages like your daughter hates you. Uh, she doesn't want to talk to you anymore. This entity was blocking their communication. Now, I don't know exactly what happened after that. I was supposed to call Gary like last year, and I, I feel bad that I never did. But anyways, I'll, I'll hopefully talk to him pretty soon. But what do you think of that? I mean, do you think it's true, first of all, that we have to lower our vibration once we're on the other side to come down close enough to talk to us? Because this would make sense with EVPs, people that do EVPs. They're getting all kinds of voices, right? Where are these voices coming from? Are these, you know, are, there can't be, you know, I mean, most of these are not a specific voice that we're hearing on EVP sessions. They're just random voices saying this or that or the other thing. So are these beings lower level beings, so to speak? Um, I don't know. Uh, I, you know, it's in, very interesting to me. There was a book by Mark Macy um, called Spirit Faces, and he tells a story about an entity he talked to on the other side that told him that there were various levels of heaven and that the first level was the dismal realm. I call it the DR. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so in the dismal realm, a lot of people, a lot of spirits hang out there because it's easier. They can jive with the frequencies on the lower level because that's who they are. Now, if it is in fact true, as Emanuel Swedenborg, the uh, uh, Swedish mystic said in the 1800s, that when we, when we die, we all go directly to the top. But so few people are there because they're not comfortable there. So they start to, you know, float down to the other levels. And um, so anyways, this Mark Macy, that was an excellent book too, you guys. But anyways, he described a bar on, it's not the lower level. It's like in the, um, God, what was that next level called? I don't remember, but there's bars and you can still drink and all that. So he said that one of the guys, <laughs> one of the guys was, you know, he used to go to this bar on one of the lower levels and he would on occasion, enter a body on earth, he would go into a bar on earth because he was an alcoholic, he'd go to, into a bar on earth and take possession of a drunk guy's or women, woman's body to feel that again. Now, what, what do you guys make of this? Do you think this is all BS or what? No, I do, I do believe in that. Um that's where they would talk about the walk-ins. <laughs> and, you know, that was sort of scary to me. I used to have some woman, you know, she's constantly telling me she was a walk-in. Um, what is that? But I I do believe it. Oh, that's the other thing, walk-in. Yeah. yeah. Walk-in, mm -hmm. walk, in, walk out. Um, well, there's a woman that we know of, me and Jennifer, and, I, and I'm not going to name her name, but she – is supposedly in contact with her husband on the other side, and he tells her he is going to walk into a body so he can be with her again. So she's on the lookout for this walk-in. And, all right, this is a little bit out there, you guys, but this is what this woman claims, is that, oh, my God. <laughs> it sounds so ridiculous. 
But she claims that her husband on the other side comes to have sex with her through other men. Is this screwed up or what, you guys? <laughs> yes. That. Yes. That part would be like a little yeah. bit like. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, we yeah, also got something in the chat room it says, I will always carry a lookout kit in my <laughs> truck. My girlfriend and I were on a way to visit some friends in South Carolina. She got car sick just out of outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, so I had to stop at a gas station in the middle of nowhere. Turns out while we were there, a young woman locked her keys in her car. After a few minutes, I was able to unlock the car and get her on her way. Coincidence? No. No. I don't no. feel either. I mean, you know, and um, I don't feel it was coincidence either. You know? No. I've had things <laughs> like that happen before, and, you know... Was Thank was there any reason for your girlfriend to be sick? Had she eaten something wrong? Had she drank something, you know, that she disagreed with her? If not, you know, like, look at all the... the, the right. At the right place, place at the right time. Right place, right time. That, you know, it wasn't... She was in 100% health when you started on a trip, and then all of a sudden, uh, out of nowhere, she's like, hello, got to go, you know. Morning oh. sickness, hey, well, pop a <laughs> You know, but... Uh, and you, you, you were in the right place at the right time to help somebody. Yes. Right. And Gigi, that's a really good one. <laughs> good well, excuse see, that's me. what I thought. I thought exactly what Gigi said when this woman told me this. I was like, what? You know? Yeah, I thought the she same thing. Just, she wow. In any case, there's any plumbers out there, but she should have just hired herself a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> right. Instead of ever having every plumber in the neighborhood. I'm sorry, that was my bad moment. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, so it's sorry. like, you know, who the hell knows? We're really, <laughs> so we're so new to everything in this realm, you guys, even though people have been investigating life after death forever, it seems. But we're really so at the beginning of this. And I believe mm. one day we will, it will be a common thing to actually speak to the dead, to be able to not necessarily call them up on a phone, but just to hear them more clearly somehow. Um, and yes, they can that, do that. <laughs> well, they can do that. In fact, <laughs> yes. yes, they can. Yeah. Now, my okay, mother. Well, go ahead, go ahead, sir. No, I was going to say, I told my mother, because we used to talk about what she would do when she got mm -hmm. to the other side, how we would have a secret message for each other and um and so i said you know don't scare me you know when you come <laughs> and she said she would call me first right <laughs> no <laughs> i'm still waiting for her to call me <laughs> that phone rings now you know he's on the other end great you're gonna have a busy fit but you never I know too now i uh there was a phrase, and, and I had been for two weeks. I kept awestruck. This I'm just awestruck. Mm -hmm. I'm awestruck, and um, I don't know where. I never used that term before, but every day I was using it, and I would even you know where in the hell is this coming from? And I was waiting for a phone call from. Uh, Robert Sharp one morning and I was up drinking my coffee and my phone starts ringing and I look at the caller ID and I'll be damned awestruck and I'm like whoa oh. this is this is yes awestruck right there on the caller ID and if you don't believe me I was so shocked I didn't answer the phone. I took a picture of the caller ID. <laughs> I took what? a picture of the you, caller you ID. You answer the phone? Nobody can tell me. I'm crazy, okay? I took a picture of the phone. No. I was like, But you what? did not answer the phone. No. I was, by the time I was, you know, got the camera ready and took the picture, it went ringing. I was ready for Robert to call. I was just floored. But, yes, there's many times, you know, that certain name a certain you know number it's it's a wrong number or just the numbers on the phone uh sometimes you know you pick up and there's nobody there 
look at pay attention to those numbers. Yes, I was floored. I do no, I did not answer the phone. I took a picture of the caller ID, and yes, I still do have that picture. And Robert had to hear all about it. <laughs> but it was yes, it's Dag. Robert's not in the room. He left. Otherwise, we put him on mic and go. But yeah, you start <laughs> using these phrases or these words, and you know, you're like, "Where the hell did that come from?" And it, you know, you spit it out, and you never know what's gonna come from that. Well, um, what about a phone ringing that's not even plugged in? Oh my goodness! Yes. Yeah. Um, I have. You know, I was blowing out batteries on the cordless phones. And of course, I have to have cordless phones. And I was blowing the batteries out like crazy. I was like, what the hell? This thing had full charge and blowing the batteries out. So I had plugged in another phone. And, uh, the phone that was not plugged in was ringing. And I was like, that's impossible. It's not f- plugged into a phone jack. It's not plugged into an electrical outlet, but it continued to happen. Um, finally, I took the battery out of it. I wrapped it up. Um, I think the phone is gone. But, uh, yes, it was just, I mean, some of the, yeah, craziest stuff has happened. Or if you don't have phone service in your home. I know someone that didn't have a phone service in his home. And um, he would spend a lot of times at my house because, His father had passed away, and there was a lot of things going on at the house. Um, His father was not very happy with those things, but uh, he would say, I wish I had a phone, you know, to call to make sure, because there was a distance between us. He would come to my home, have dinner, and before I had to go to work, take a nap. Um, And he was saying one evening, I wish I had a house phone. That was before the cell phones were so popular. Uh, You know, I wish I had a phone. I would call. And he said, within minutes, the house phone rang. And he was like, well, you know, that's crazy. There's no phone service here. And he picked up the phone, and all he could hear was crackling. And it scared him. Um, and But he did. He dialed my number, and he was able to get through. Hmm. Um now, but he says he could hear this crackling. He said some, and when they permanently disconnect your phone, you no longer get that crackling. But yeah, a lot of weird stuff was going on over there. I won't get into all that. But yes, um, yeah, they uh, crazy how some things can happen, but they do. Right. Although I have to say, I have to clarify this with, I don't believe in demons. Oh, I, no. I, I believe that they are thought forms. And, you know, really Renee taught me this is that we all create thought forms. So there's thought forms running around everywhere. And the thought forms actually, according to Julia Asante's book, take on a life of their own. So once you create a thought form. Whoa. Yeah, and I was like, oh, my God. You know no, what I mean? My lights just flickered. <laughs> i just sorry oh, about that. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> so, um, so the thought forms we create, for instance, when she was first starting out, when Renee was first starting out as a psychic medium and learning, um, she would be faced with these horrific beings, and they were so scary, and she was terrified. And her teacher said to her, um, um, oh, night, Becca. Thank you. Night, Um, Becca. So her teacher said to her, now look at them. And she's like, I'm looking at them. And the lady said, they're not real. You created them. And even they, they were of such power, they could even climb in the back of her car. Okay, so this is what we can do with our own minds, you guys. And I'm talking to myself as well as anyone listening right now. But I'm saying we can create amazing things. We we can create nightmares with our minds, and we can create absolute wonder. So, I mean, but I think we just don't know the power of our own minds and I, I I'm not sure if we'll even get to knowing the power of our own minds in this lifetime you know you okay Jennifer 
Yes, I am. <laughs> I keep accidentally hitting this mute button. Yeah, I mean, I never in a million years thought my mind was that powerful. But um, it is. It, it, uh, I'm, I'm learning that. Um, you know, and that's why I say be careful with your thoughts. Be careful with what you put out there. Um, because sometimes those things you put out there do come back. They yeah. do come back. And that's why I'm a firm believer in manifesting. I am. I use the phrase I am and I will. Um, mm-hmm. very often. Much like Brad says in the chat, we all have so much to learn. Yes. Nobody is ever, nobody is ever at the point where they don't, they have nothing to learn. And somebody who says, oh, no. I have nothing to learn, I know it all. Well, that's the person you walk away from. That's, that's right. That's, that's my, a bunch of you know, bullshit. Right. Because, my friend. Uh, as, as, <laughs> ooh, I could say it in French, but it wouldn't yeah. understand. Um, as many people as I've met, since I've been on Facebook and, and in the spiritual communities, the different everybody has different communities, different people and different who know each other. I have never yet once met anybody who said, I know it all. I don't need to learn anything else. And it's like it, it, it made me feel good because that for those of us who, who are just starting out, it's like, okay, so then, you know, there's still hope for me. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I'm only going to be certain, you know, when I started out, I think I was 50. And, uh, you know, you don't sit there and go, okay, well, I'm never going to learn this because I don't have enough time. People who are, as what I consider younger, well, they are younger than me, but further along on their path than I am. And I'm sitting there thinking like, oh, my God, look, here, example, Jennifer, she's like, I'm over here and she's way up here. But you know what? We walk together on the same path. Because yeah. she teaches me by just talking to me. You you learn from friends by just being. You know, and this is what I think is awesome. And so yeah, we always have something to learn. And and Jennifer's a really good teacher. But I'm not gonna blow her on. <laughs> yeah. She'll she a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, you have your you have your own abilities too. Yeah, we're all life. teachers. We're all yeah. teachers. Um, I know uh, Sandy Anastasi. Uh, I used to do chat roles with her, and she used to tell me, "She's you're a teacher." I know. I used to know when the, my kids were growing up. I worked in special education. I've, she says, "No, you are a teacher." No, I didn't go to school for that. And she says, "It's not the education." She says, it is your life experiences and the things that you are learning and going through. That's what makes you the teacher. And um, that makes a lot of sense. It does. Um, because all my life, that is what I would do. Um, I couldn't understand why these people were coming to me with all their stuff. And, you know, um, and I would be, you know, I'd talk to them. But it was my life experiences that I would share with them. Um, so I guess so, but like they say, when you're ready to learn, the teacher presents himself, mm-hmm. and that's how it's been with me. I have learned so much, um, over these years. I, you know, like I said, I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't have all these great, amazing teachers and mentors in my life. Everyone has taught me something. Whether it's a good lesson or a bad lesson. <laughs> Whether it's a lesson of what taught. you do, what not to do again. Mm-hmm. Right. I have been taught some were easy and some weren't so nice. Yeah, but I, I learned. I, just, I remember I was at a um, whole health expo. I was doing a plate uh, exhibit. And there was a woman there who was a big local guru. And she's wearing all white. And she's very precise, and she's got perfect makeup on, and her nails are done, and blah, blah, blah. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But she said, oh, I have these plates. She goes, I have, I've had, I've been using plates for years. And she goes, I, you know, I don't let anyone touch me, and no one can get near me. And I'm like, that is not what it's about, lady. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, oh, my God, 
like the guy on the street that is homeless. I don't, yeah, I'll talk to him. I'll hug him, whatever. It's about love. And as you just put in the chat before, Jennifer, about the, the love and opening your heart and having an open heart, keeping an open heart, no matter what, not, you know, I can't stand people that put up all these walls and won't let anybody like deter them from being like safe and protected. You know what I mean? It's just that bothers me. I, I'm not like that. I've never been like that, you know. But, yeah, some of these people, you know, especially these new age gurus, they're, you know, they, they have the idea that, oh, they are, they are above everybody. And don't touch me. Don't get near me. You can't touch my energy. Exactly. You know, it's, oh, I can't stand it. I can't stand it, you know. It's not about that, you know. Yeah, I can't either. I, I, there's a lot of people I see, you know, and they, oh, they, you know, turn their nose up at the less, less fortunate, uh, you know, if you don't look a certain way, or you're not dressed a certain way. Um, I've seen people in stores that really can't afford, you know, groceries and, uh, you know, somebody help them out and you know this they make these rude comments and have something say you never know because yes, it could happen to you it can happen well, to you don't think it can't because yes it can and remember well, have a, sometimes you've snubbed your nose at others because of it i have a story about a gentleman who hangs around the store where i work um he's Dirty looking, he's dingy looking. He can smell that he's he lives outside because you smell the smoke in his clothes, you know. And people always want to give him money, you know. It's like because oh, he looks hungry. He looks, you know, he looks destitute. He's got to be hungry and have no food. Well, this guy has money. He's just very special. He lost um, his his child died, and his wife committed suicide shortly thereafter. And he sort of went off the deep end, shall we say. I don't know what else to call it. That he still has the house, but he can't live in it because of the memories that it brings. He, If you see him walking down the street, sometimes you'll see him like he's holding the hand of a child because he's walking his child. The man goes to the bank. He takes out money in, in, in Canadian. We have $1 coins and $2 coins. He'll take out rolls of this. And some people know that he has it. Some kids have knocked over his bike and and if you if you touch his money he won't touch it it's, it's con contaminated you know there's a lot that goes on but when you have a serious conversation when you can have a serious conversation with this gentleman he makes a whole lot of sense you know but everybody thinks because he dresses dirty and he's you know always out in his snow and he's out you know and they, they think oh my god he's got no money he's got no place to go yeah no he has no place to go because he can't go back there. And he does have, uh, uh, like I said, OCD, I think is, is the term. He has, does have OCD. But people think the worst of him. But I've had conversations with him that, you know, he's brilliant. Man, but he just, he got hurt so bad back then that it just turned that switch off and made him close into himself. Will right. you have CDO? What the heck is CDO? I think I might be afraid to ask. Yes, know. Corrine does emit good vibes. Yes. And, you know, like children. Uh, Corrine was telling me about a little girl in the store. And because, you know, people can tell, especially OCD. That's what I was thinking. Is You're that such a twat. But you emit, people know, especially children, um, animals, they know, people know, you know, they, you know, if you're a good person, you can tell. Um, there's certain people just that they have that aura, that shine, that smile. Um, smile at somebody, see the reaction you get, but, yeah. okay, hold off on the tricks till the show's over. Um, mm. <laughs> whoa. Um. Oh shoot! Yeah, here we go. <laughs> um. 
Um, okay. That's just confirmation that what I'm saying is true. Um, she emits, um, you know, this, these positive vibes. I mean, the, you know, she was telling me about the little girl. Um, but the little girl, that goodness and, the, you know, the gift that Corrine gave her. I'm sure that little girl still has that gift and she cherishes that. Yeah, I, I really like, um, I, I love to, you know, not, uh, you guys, I'm no Mary Poppins or Mother <laughs> Teresa, but I do like to play the fairy godmother. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, she does. Yes, she yes, does. She does. <laughs> and she is. She's the, Corrine's the fairy godmother to an awful lot of us, and she knows that. Yep. Thank you. Because Corrine she gives not only magic. She, yes, but Corrine gives from her heart, and yes. and her heart is like immense. She might be, it's it. Corrine might be destitute and down, but if you need something, she'll be there for you. Exactly. Yeah. And sometimes she needs to go swift kicking her pants for doing so, but I love her anyway. <laughs> Let's do it. Do. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. I try my best. Yes, yes, she does. And that's why I, you know, I feel firmly that, you know, if we can give back by placing our orders at www.purpleplates.com, that would be greatly appreciated. And, you know, that's just a way of giving back. Hi, Donna. Hi, Donna. Yeah, I don't know who Donna is. I believe she's uh, she's a new listener. Yeah, yeah, and I think is I have a son awaiting ADHD, and that is something. Yeah, we need to talk about that, Donna. That's something that uh, she's in the UK. That's what I thought. Sugar, it's past your bedtime. It's twelve thirty. Go to bed. Yeah, they diagnose all these children with ADHD and ADHD and ADD and. OCD. They, they, it's a diagnosis. They just want to throw these kids some pills. You can work on that with diet, you know, activities. Totally. Purple plate. Purple plate might help that also. Um, uh, yeah. They diagnosed my son at a young age, too, and he was the first one to tell him, you just want to give me pills because you don't want to deal with me. But we worked that out. No medication. His activities, you know, do you know, keeping him busy, um, the yeah. foods he ate, never been on medication. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, they really, you know, they got you roped in left and right with the medical uh, field, the medical. Exactly. exactly. Not saying that all the medical field is bad. I'm no, put no, in the I'm not here, but. You have to look at both sides of the fence, and I'm sure Donna has, you know, but it, it's not it's not something that will stop us. If we can figure out a way to make it work right. together. Yeah. You need to do something, even if it's just a name, we could do something about it. Right. And I do, that's how I worked with my son. I worked in special education, too, so I knew firsthand, you know, what uh, we would be dealing with, but it's it, it, they, you know, you put a label on it, you give it a pill, and okay, you're good to go. No, uh, uh-uh. uh, it was the, the foods that he was eating. He wasn't a big sweet eater, thank goodness. Um, and the activities, um, the activities that he did, um, it just, and um, he learned to do so many things on his own. You know, just watching somebody one time, he learns so many things. Yeah. Well, I know they diagnosed my son. Okay, let's take this back. The school diagnosed my son and said he can't keep still. He's, you know, he's, he's ADD or ADHD. I can't remember what it was. And I said, really? I said, we took him to his doctor. The child, we had a pediatrician at the time. And the pediatrician laughed. Just He said, no pills, no medication. The school has to work with him. You have to work with him. And this is what you need to do. 
And if that doesn't work, you work with that for like a couple of months. If that doesn't work, then we come back and we'll have them tested. You know, but he says just because the school says he needs pills to calm him him down right. doesn't mean I'm going to give it to him. Exactly. And I was like, I want, I want to hug that man so badly because, you know, and, and my son is like, okay, he's a boy, so he's special. <laughs> I love boys, I do. But I also know that they're very special. And, um, uh, yep, 10 year and we are forget where. How old is your son, Donna? I know you have to go to bed. You started it. 15. 15. Yeah. He started getting hyper at, at about 10 years old. Nope. Five. Uh, yeah. It's about the age that they start getting little puppy. Right. But yeah, but we're, the, the, I know that the medical uh, procedures and, and things in the, in the UK are different in, in the UK and in Canada and the States, they're all different. But I'm sure that, I'm sure you've tried everything. It's not like it's, it's not like it's a new to you. It's been 10 years. And maybe reaching out into different countries, we can, you know, maybe we can come up with something. Exactly. Point in different directions, you know. Purple plate is, is a way to start, you know, possibly. Yeah. And, and different things. Like Jennifer said, she was in special ed, so maybe she's got some. Yeah, I'd be willing to talk to you. Like I said, well, actually, when I was pregnant with my son, I kept saying, this is going to be a boy. Nah, you're going to have another girl. Nope, this is going to be a boy, and he's going to be hyperactive. I can tell. Um, and he was, you know, when you go start going to school, I mean, he was very active. But I knew, you know, okay, we're going to have to work with this. But, uh, yeah, they, you know, you have to go to their doctor um, when you do the IEP testings and things that, you know, I knew the process. That doctor, of course, oh, yes, we're going to put him on this, you know, new thing we've got out, which is called Adderall. No, you're not. Um, mm -hmm. And then, of course, they can't prescribe. So it was take him to my own doc, you know, our own doctor and his doctor. And I sat down and I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> they can go to hell. I'm not giving my <laughs> kid, you know, medication. Um, and he was, he agreed. We sat. Adderall was not very popular at that time. And, uh, the more popular was the Ritalin. And we sat and talked about it. And he said the same thing. This kid doesn't need it. Um, yep. he's not going to do well on it. We did try it out. And, um, it was very short lived. Um, that was nothing my kid was going to take. And I got him off of it right away. He's like, I'm not going to take this. I don't like the way it makes me feel. We did other things. And he just not, you know, to this day, he'll tell you, I got ADHD. Um, I'm high, but he stays busy. He's very active and he's a jack of all trades and he knows what works for him. Okay. John is off to bed. We, I put in Jennifer's, uh, Facebook page. Um, connect up with her. Let's see what we can, you know, how, if we can help in any other way. Um, I will. There's Jennifer H. Get your butt to it. You know what to do. Push the button. Send a friend request. Okay. Um, we are past our time. So everybody, um, thank you. Kareen, uh, oh, much love. Thank you very much for, for joining us and for thank Honoring us with with just your sweetness and your light and your silliness. <laughs> Thank you, Darlene, very much. Thank you, Jennifer and Brian. Oh, thanks everybody Je for being here. Um, get your yep. butts over to Purple Eight Corrine. You know I love you. Yeah. I love you, everybody. Too. Jennifer, thank you very much. This was an awesome. You made just an awesome guest, Brian. Amazing, amazing. You were so quiet. I didn't even notice you. They're just popping up every so often. <laughs> you know I love you, Brian. And if you misbehave, I'll tell Paul and smack you again. <laughs> I'm just sitting here quietly learning from all you guys. And uh, believe me, I think you're absolutely fantastic, every one of you. Um, I wish I was anywhere near your class. <laughs> but uh, thank you again anyway. God bless to everybody and look after yourselves. Night night you. everybody. Many blessings everyone. Night. Night.